This is Hupcast, the short, sharp podcast from the Hands Up Project. Hello and welcome to the Hands Up Project podcast. The Hands Up Project is an educational charity connecting young people and their English teachers in Palestine with a network of volunteers from around the world. In creating this podcast, we hope to amplify the voices of our friends in Gaza. English teachers and students, whose faces we would normally see on Zoom every day of the week in storytelling and drama sessions. At that moment, Jaha arrived home. Beep, beep, meet, meet, beep, beep, meet, meet, beep, beep, meet, meet, dig, dig, dig. Hello, Amina. Hello, Jaha. I think you cooked the meat, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's enter the house. <gasps> All the neighbors in our house. Welcome, Amina. Welcome, Abdullah. How are you all? Fine, Oh, Amina, you can give us the meat. Let's move it quickly. Amina, well, the plates are empty. Amina, where's the meat? Uh, I'm so sorry, Zaha. Uh, we, were, we were waiting, waiting for you, and you were talking. And you didn't see the cat took the meat. The cat? What did she do? It ate it all. Give me this cat! Where's this cat? The cat ate all the meat? Give me it! The cat weighs three kilos and the meat was three kilos too. If this is the cat, where's the meat? And if this is the meat, where's the cat? Where's the meat and where's the cat? Where's the meat and where's the cat? Where's my meat? Where's my meat? Oh my gosh! You've just listened to 13-year-old Rahaf acting as the main character, Joha, in the short play, Joha and the Meat. I've shown the video of this performance to teachers all over the world as part of a presentation that I've often done at conferences about the value of simple drama activities in language classrooms. Drama doesn't need a stage, it doesn't need lots of props, and it doesn't need to be an extracurricular activity just for the high achievers. It can be done in regular classes for every learner and it can fit in well with the English curriculum. No one has shown this more than the teachers and students of Gaza. Like so many young people in Gaza, Rahaf has grown up acting and performing in English and has become a confident and articulate young woman. She's the daughter of Saida, whose story we relayed in a previous podcast. Just after I got the written message from Saida, I got this audio message from Rahaf, who's now 20, telling the story from her perspective. This is my story, one of thousands. It all started when we had to leave our home. We had to stay in my grandparents' house thinking it would be safe. After almost three weeks there, we went back home to bring some clean clothes. Cause the day we left, we didn't bring anything with us. We just escaped fast as the bumps were faster. For sorry, we were not able to return back to my grandparents. We were stuck in the street and bumps were everywhere. We were forced to go to a near school and stay there. At that day, a big number of tanks attacked the school. It was the most scary night ever. They arrested all men and forced them to be naked in a very cold night. Women had to go to another far school. They took the men to a very big hole and beated them badly. My brother was with them. We knew nothing about him for about 20 hours. When he came, he told us that he walked naked for a very long distance and the soldiers told them not to wear any clothes and to go to Salah din street and from there to the south of Gaza. And everyone knows that going there means going to death as the roads to the south were closed by the tanks. There was a plane following them all the way if anyone tried to escape, they will all they will all be killed. For my 15-year-old brother, 
He was chosen to help a woman on a wheelchair. The woman weighs almost 150 kilos and my brother doesn't have the strength to help her. So they shot over his head and told him he will be killed if he didn't go faster. They also forced him to take off his clothes. That night, we didn't sleep at all. Meeting them after all this was kind of a miracle. The next day, we knew that the tanks are going to attack the new school. So we left going to Shifa hospital, walking for almost three hours carrying many heavy bags, leaving behind my grandparents, my two uncles and their families stuck in their home. I can't forget the scene of the tanks in front of their house. They were sieged there for eight days with no water or food. They couldn't even turn on the lights. Sadly, on the 25th of December, we lost our uncle Sami. A small plane entered his room and killed him. He was body pieces. Only his leg was found. He stayed for five days and nobody could collect his body parts. Can you imagine that? Can anyone imagine being with the body pets of someone of your beloved and couldn't do anything? This is Gaza. At that time, we stayed in a very small house with another family. After the death of my uncle, we lost the connection with my mother's family. A week after, we heard that the tanks left their street. We went running there. We found out that my grandparents' home was destroyed. My home and the whole building were totally burned. And my mother's car and my uncle's, the murder, were also burnt. We lost everything in a blink of an eye. We suffered for days and we're still suffering. But the world can't hear us anymore. Here is Gaza. Rahf al-Madhun, the 3rd of January, 2024.